underway about a half hour. The Sheboygan Municipal Auditorium and Armory was dedicated in May 1942 with the purpose of being an armory, a place where they stored weapons and ammunition for the Wisconsin National Guard. It had a seating capacity of approximately 3,500. It was home for the Sheboygan Redskins, Sheboygan's professional basketball team, and it was also home for Lakeland College. Alice Cooper played at the Armory in July of 1981. Bob Hope did a show at the Armory back in the 70s. The circus was held in the Armory. Festival of Trees and the Hmong New Year are two present-day events held at the Armory. And North-South basketball has been played there for many years. Our show is a tribute to the Armory and to all the players and coaches who participated in the tradition of the Armory. Hello, everybody. My name is Mike Martin, and joining me is Chris Wright. Chris, we have a real nice show planned for tonight. We have some special guests. Who might those be? Yeah, special is, is probably not a, a big enough word to use or describe these people. Uh, I know you did some work, and we have Pete Barth and Dwight Pelkin from Sheboygan Press. Pete, of course, is the sports editor now. Dwight Pelkin, longtime Sheboygan writer, still writes today. And we have two longtime coaches from the Sheboygan area, from Sheboygan South, or, you know, what used to be Central. We have uh, Coach John Schumann in, and... Uh, of course, from Sheboygan North, we have Tom Desatel, who's been there for a number of years as well. And tell us a little bit about our third segment. Well, our third seg segment is basically going to be a little tribute. We've done some filming and pictures and did some, uh, basically some legwork and went over to the museum and took pictures of different situations and things throughout the last couple of weeks. And we're going to, you know, place those into our show. And, you know, even when the North-South game comes up for the last time, we'll, we'll put those in as well. Okay, we're going to step out. When we come back, I'll have Dwight Pelkin and Pete Barth on the set with me. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Eight seconds. Wainer with the basketball. Five seconds. Off the dribble. Splits to the fence. And scores with two seconds to go. The game may not be over. I think South may have gotten a timeout. And it's going to take a little bit of time to clear this court, but... I think there's one or two seconds left in this one. 74-72 right now. North leads. The pass is blocked by Susky. And Sheboygan North hangs on to beat Sheboygan South. The final here tonight, 74-72. North the winner in overtime. Mike. Joining me on the set is Pete Barth, the present sports editor for the Sheboygan Press and longtime sports editor, 40-plus years. Uh, former sports editor, Dwight Pelkin. Uh, Dwight, as you know, we're talking about the North-South games at the Armory, and of course you have a lot of experience with a lot of games being played there. Uh, as you think back over the, over the years, how has the pace of play changed from now and way back in the 40s and 50s when you were getting your start in newspaper business? <laughs> Obviously a heck of a lot. <laughs> uh, and of course, I can't help thinking, but when I was in high school, and that's when they initiated the 10-second rule, which we thought was impossible, and... Uh, 10 seconds being to get the ball across To get the ball court. across, and also a jump ball after every basket. So we swept into the slower-phased game well, fairly steadily, and of course, back in those days, you uh, you had more of set plays and you had a more deliberate style of play because you you brought the ball up and you okay you had 10 seconds say to you know to make your progress and uh, there wasn't the pell-mell type of ball that you've got now and so we uh, we just it, it was a slower paced game you didn't score as many points but the first game that was played in the armory in 43, the score was 33 to 30. Well, nowadays that might be a halftime score, right, Pete? Sure. And you uh, uh, took more deliberate shots. You didn't use the two hand, you did shoot the one. <laughs> but um, uh, you, I think you worked the ball into the center with his back to the basket a lot more. And, uh, and the center would, would play more of a oh, shock yeah, type of ball maybe. And Pete, you, Dwight mentioned something you know about working the ball in the middle, and I think there's some been been some rule changes that really have kind of gotten us away from that. Uh, as you think about covering north and south in the Armory over the last couple of years, how do you see 
you know, the pace of play. Is, has there been much of a change over your uh, it tenure? Var it varies a little. You know, we've had some uh, relatively low scoring games here lately in the 50s and such, but uh, of course, you know, I don't know if we'll talk about it later, but the 96 game, the 103 or 103 <laughs> to 90, 102 93, I think it was, was an amazing game. But you talk about the rule change, obviously, the three pointer. Yeah. has been a huge impact, and uh, Tom Desitel's style has, has also been a huge impact on this series. You know, he came in and had that style of play, and it's been an amazing... And I think one of the things that Tom has really had to fight over the years is uh, the Dick Bennett syndrome from the, from the Green Bay schools uh, hasn't creeped into Sheboygan. I think South, mostly, over the years with Cully Hebner and uh, John Schumann, they've, you know, maintained a pretty... Oh, not, I want to say fast pace, but uh, not a slowdown pace either, at least in Cully's later years. Yeah, yeah. Are there any players that really stand out in your mind? I can remember one guy, uh, Kevin Cobra, I think, 35 points one night. He just went off on North, and uh, it was an upset win for the Southsiders. They beat North that night. Anything that you guys remember? Well, Dwight, let's start with you again, because, you know, you can take us back a little bit farther. <laughs> I remember in the Armory... Dick Schrader being on a great central team and losing because the other team, the, the first stringers fouled out and the subs came in and do a, they did a fantastic job and so they won. Uh, Hook Swimmer, Sonny Krause, uh, Hubrixy, oh God, I, I, it's really hard to, it's Some really hard to Some of the ones that I remember, from when I was in high school back in the early 60s, they had a team that went to state, and the core of the team were juniors. And uh, Johnson Ellis and Gary Campman and Tony Cabird were on that team, and then they had Frank Rimkus, and uh, I think it was uh, Kroos was the, was the fifth guy, a starter. But, you know, you figure coming back, those guys are really going to be tough. But uh, South struggled when those guys were seniors, you know, the next year. But uh, I know those are some really great players, too. Pete, you know, as you think about over the years, you know, anybody that stands out in your mind? The, the ones that stand out, and we, went, we were talking about that high-scoring game, is the uh, two Coutser twins, you know, that, that Andy night, and if Peter, you remember those And they're two presently kids, coaching and, itself. You know, it, I don't know why, but, and they were on the losing team that night, but I just have this, this vision of those guys and how hard they played that night on both sides of the floor. It was really uh, unbelievable to see a game of that. Uh, you know, yeah. It was an epic game, and it was just a great game. And I remember those two, you know, sweat just, it's always hot in there, as you know, you know. And, <laughs> By the end of the night, these kids are just, they're sweat, the jerseys are just soaked through. And, you know, I can so. remember, uh, I think I was a fan at the game that, that one night, or maybe I was up on the stage announcing, but they actually had to stop the game for a time and try to get the humidity yeah. out because the floor was <laughs> glossing over with uh, right. dampness. You well, know, it was being it. pretty dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. And even last year, Kyle Tetschlag and those guys were just soaked. You know, it was just, uh, I think the, f the first or second game last year, so maybe it was the I second think, game. Yeah, I think it was the second was one. just unbelievably humid and, and uh, you know so everyone was sweating and it was it was it's a great event. Take us back to some of the coaches Dwight that you remember from early on now, I mentioned Cully Hebner before uh, you might be able to take us back even prior to Cully Hebner. Cully was the head coach at Central and South for uh, just over 20 years I believe. Oh god yes. Uh, Cully was the first one when I came and he was there until he I think he was playing poker and just died, you know. <laughs> <laughs> One of those, hey, what a way to go, I guess, yeah, really. is what you'd say. But um, uh, it, it, was, it was a friendly atmosphere then because you could, go to the, you could go to the gym, and in those days, hey, we didn't have girls to, to cover, so we could concentrate on the boys, and we could, we, we'd stop in at the practices and hey, there'd be an extra ball around, you could take your shots on one of the side rims and so on, and Cully would be there, and he'd, he'd take his shots too when he wasn't, you know, directly practicing. And it was a, a very friendly, uh, casual atmosphere, and you got, to know the, you got to know the kids pretty well because, they, you know, they'd fire a ball back at you if you missed and hit the hoop. And um, uh, after Cully... I think the atmosphere sort of changed gradually because you didn't have that close relationship. You know, we'd, we'd, we'd go on bus trips with them occasionally and maybe stop at Gamox, where is Gamox? 
Do you remember? <laughs> did you ever get to do any of that, Pete? Travel with the team? I think some of that is times have changed. You know, time yeah. in the media. The media has changed. Yeah. You, you try to have that separation, so to speak, and not that that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I just think that's that's changed a little bit in the industry in general. I know one of the things. Uh, uh, in calling in games and things to the press, you know, maybe doing a little league game. It's well, you know, we just we can't cover all that. There's right. so much to cover right, now right. versus the, you know, yeah. it wasn't quite as extensive. Yeah, we had it easy, yeah. <laughs> relatively speaking, man. That's, uh, yeah. Now you didn't have quite the extended uh, career yet as uh, Dwight, but uh, you've been through the Deso years, and those have mm -hmm. been uh, pretty productive for the North Side. Sure, and uh, you know, I did see. Uh, Bob Ruskuski's second stint, obviously a great coach, you know, um, he was only there for a few years in that second stint, but yet he made a huge difference yeah. and, and really brought that program up. And, and, you know, Dan Koopman came along and did not have a lot of success against Tom, although he did, you know, good for him, went out with a bang and got a win against him last year in his last year. But they, they you know, the amazing thing about this series in the Armory is that the average margin of a victory is a point. It's, I think it's something wow. like 57.3 to 56.2. Wow. You know, all wins considered. And that just shows that, you know, really, it truly is that the oldest cliche in the book, yeah. throw the records out. I mean, we hate yeah. to use it. Yeah. We hate to say yeah. it because it's such a cliche. But, yeah. you know, there have been nights, you know, especially in the leaner years for South, where I've been up there thinking, man, North is going to win this game by 35, you know. And, you know, yeah. when you know it, you know, South finds a way. And it's, it may be ugly. It may yeah. be, you know, you grind it out, you know, and, and it becomes a great game. And it almost always is. One of the well, advents, go ahead, Dwight, I'm sorry. It's like that first game uh, in 43. They were both up there fighting for the championship, and I think Central was really favored, but North won by three. Mm -hmm. One thing that we've seen change over the years is the advent of girls' basketball and, and that entering into the fray in terms of North-South Armory games. Uh, Pete, how has that changed uh, in terms of press coverage and, and that sort of thing? It's, uh, it's not too bad for us because we, we cover them separately. You know, I'll, I'll have a guy who will go do the girls game, come back to the office, and then I'll do the boys game usually. So it's not a big deal. I, I think it's a neat thing. You know, as the father of a nine-year-old daughter who loves basketball, I think it's, it's great that, they, that these girls over the last decade or so have gotten to experience that, the thrill of this, this whole event. We need to wrap up our, our interview, but I wanted to ask, ask you guys one more question, and that is Dwight uh, and Pete, as we close down the Armory and the North-South games in the Armory, what are your views on that? Uh, you know, how do you think is it going to be? How do you think it's going to be different? Uh, any feelings on this last game coming up February 11th? It'll be very interesting from the standpoint of the fans, I think. Uh, on the parking aspect, for one thing, and uh, the seating, obviously, they're going to have one side for one and one side for the other. Uh, unfortunately, it will give the home team a, a somewhat advantage, I think, that in, when you're playing on your home floor, uh, that should mean a few points, at least in theory. Mm -hmm. And uh, it'll be very interesting how that works out, where the armory, at least, as you say, the, the, the point spread was practically zero. Now it's going to be, it's going to be a little no difficult. Uh, you're going to, you know your guys are at home and you know you're expected to win if you're similar records. Pete? I actually think that it's kind of sad, to be honest. I think that yep. uh, now it's just going to be another thing. You know, it's going to be like Appleton East against Appleton West. or. Yep. Yeah. Milwaukee Vincent against Milwaukee King. It'll be, it won't have the uniqueness. You know, I came here from Florida, and, and to me, this is one of the most unique things I've ever seen. You walk into the place, you see the banners on the walls, you see the, you know, the scorekeepers up on the stage. You know, it's such an unbelievably yeah. unique. It's like you're back in 1952 or something. You know, and and I, I think it's kind of something. There's something sad about that. That it, now it's just going to be another game in another fancy new gymnasium. Yeah. Right? Sort of in a sense, sort of like playing in Madison for the WIAA championship, mm -hmm. you're at least on a neutral floor. Right. And now that neutral floor is taken away. Right. And that, I don't know. That's Guys, I want to thank you for your perspective on this, and uh, thanks for coming in. It's a great interview, and uh, it was really great talking to you guys. When we come back, Chris Wright will be interviewing Tom Desitel and John Schumann. So stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Ruby's shot is no good. South chases it down, throws it out. It's gonna win. South a winner, 51 to 48. Pandemonium at the Armory. Welcome back, everybody. It's a great privilege to have the two coaches I'm about to talk to, uh, longtime coach uh, John Schumann and Tom Desatel. Coach, how long did you, did you uh, do things at South? I started in 1964, and then I finished in 1981. So I, I ended up with about 17 years. But I coached elsewhere. I coached two years in Minnesota, and then I coached 11 years at East Troy. So I ended up with, with 30 years of basketball. So. Oh. And coach yourself? And I, I was a JV coach for eight years at Milwaukee, at Milwaukee Madison, and came to Sheboygan North as a teacher in 1977 uh, 78 for the school year there. And that was my first experience with North South basketball, and I'm still on my feet and, and coaching at North, so I've been there for a, a few years. What made the uh, Army special to you two gentlemen? Well, it was a uh, a kind of a college court and uh, we enjoyed, I enjoyed it, uh, going down there and having the kids play because it was, a, it was a little bit bigger and more like a college effect. We used to scrimmage years ago when WIA allowed us to uh, go over to uh, the center and scrimmage against them and that gave us a bigger court. So it, it was kind of nice and uh, a good treat to go down there and play. Coach? I think uh, after a few years of, of north-south basketball, the thing that I remember best was uh, when you'd go to a wedding or go to a funeral or go to any social gathering, uh, north-south always came up in Sheboygan. And uh, Coach, do you remember that when this happened and this happened, it seems like everybody had memories of the armory, many of which I've forgotten because of the many games there. So uh, you could tell it was, uh, it was right at the top of their minds. Uh, uh, as far as their high school experiences were concerned. Anything besides about the length of the floor that made the building kind of special? Well, the thing that was special was that they had the stage there, which was very close. And of course, the other end was uh, a little bit uh, more room behind the basket. But I don't know if you people know Walt Anderson, but he used to coach here for many years. Walt suggested years before this that the baskets should be put in at least another five feet on either end. That would have gave you much more running room on either side. But that was, that was one, one thing that was kind of different. It was really, really close. And it was hard for the officials to call plays on the stage end because they couldn't get a good view. So. Hmm. Of course, one scoreboard uh, made for uh, the fact that do you want to see the scoreboard and, uh, for the second half or do you want to see... Uh, uh, the stage for the first half, uh, for, the, for whatever half you chose. So that was an experience too. The kids had to run down the sideline and probably uh, jump up on the stage, uh, at least for a seat until they could come into the game. Otherwise, it would appear that there's an extra person on the, on the court. And of course, the cheerleaders wanting to do their thing, as cheerleaders always have done, are kind of in the way of things because they're just about on the court. And uh, uh, John and I practically fell out of our seats in the games we coached trying to get a view of what went on at the other end because of the excitement of the cheerleaders too. And the closeness of the students and the parents? Yeah, you, well from where I sat, I couldn't see down the other end. You know, it was, it was a little difficult. If the ball went out one side or the other, you were in a little trouble. But it was difficult being on, on one end of the court. But uh, Up until 10 years ago, coaches had to uh, had the seatbelt rule. Yeah. They had to yeah. sit down. So uh, uh, John and I were sitting down and uh, practically uh, leaning forward to, to do anything we could to see what went on. We're going to kind of open this up a little bit. Any special games or moments or special player situations that took place that you can think of from, from all these years? Well, Tom and I had some good ball games together, but I, I can remember way back when that uh, we had a good ball game going, and with less than a minute left, Pete Fisher had a, a f two free throws coming, and he made the first, and, and after this, the second one, the referee gave him the ball, 
Then all of a sudden he took it away and he went over in front of the North crowd and told them to keep quiet and <laughs> calm them down. And I could have just about killed him because, <laughs> hey, you don't take the ball away from a ball player, you know, just when he's ready to shoot. Oh, boy, I thought, oh, here we go. But he, Pete made it anyway, so fortunately we won the game. But, boy, that to me, that was a bad move on the officials' part. But that's one thing I do remember pretty much. I think 1977, uh, my first year at North, my first experience against Coach Schumann. Uh, in fact, I talked to Coach Schumann when I got the job, and he said, well, you know, games, North-South games are played at the Armory, and I didn't think much of it until that game when uh, first time out, I'm uh, shouting, and I've, I don't see any response on the faces of our players. I don't think they could hear what I said, which was probably better for them. Um, first game we I ever coached against uh, Coach Schumann, North-South game, went into overtime. We lost 75-71. Uh, I had to look that up. I didn't uh, <laughs> remember that, but uh, five of our players fouled out. Now, of those five players, uh, one was Scott Glazer, who would be valedictorian and uh, uh, went to Notre Dame and is now an orthopedic in town. The other my captain I had was Fred Forsterling, and Fred's now the JV girls coach at North. And a third, uh, Billy Free, kind of ties things together because his son Nolan, uh, now in the JV game, and keep in mind that the JV games are played at the Armory as well, he hit a th well, better than a half-court shot to send the, send the game into the first of three overtimes. And I think all of the participants in those games, whether it be JV and, and some of uh, the teachers at South, played only JV basketball for Coach Schumann. Uh, he recognized talent, I think, and I can think of a couple of those teachers, and, and that's what they said as well, but they remember the North-South experience, JV or varsity. Uh, Coach, anything uh, you can share about, like, practices or pre-game things or uh, post-game situation that kind of stands out a little bit? Well, you mean other than somebody bringing a pig in the gym or, <laughs> or a chicken that used to happen years ago? I well, don't know that's if we, if unique. We should say anything about yeah. that or not. I know there's been tennis balls thrown back and forth, and <laughs> or pennies things. maybe. But generally speaking, uh, I think it was a good thing for the kids. But uh, I don't know. There, there were a lot of a lot of good things about about the army that were were really nice. That uh, I think everybody should enjoy. Um, I, I tell you, I I keep telling people that we're going to have these magnificent. Uh, uh, north-south uh, gyms, and I think John and I would have been pleased to, to experience those for our teaching careers, but uh, I think the, the interest in north-south basketball is going to go down uh, as a result. Uh, th these games were special. They're special to the people in the community. Uh, they can broadcast them live and still have them sold out, and, uh, um, and boy, the memories. I, our first... Uh, the second game my first year there, the first one wasn't so good because we lost to Coach Schumann, but the second one started with five technical fouls on South High School, and it was because the numbers were wrong in the book. And we wound up winning the game, and uh, that's not the way to start a basketball game. I don't know whose fault it was, and it was kind of embarrassing, but that's the way the rules went. And, and on and on through history go these North-South games. We, we used to practice at South with very dim lights because it was not as bright in the, in the armory. So when we practiced, we just had, uh, we turned the lights way down low. So Now, Coach, you have the uh, kids kind of warm up at the uh, Y. I don't know how many people are familiar with that, but uh, how did that get started? Oh, one of my first years there, I noticed that the kids were reading the signs and uh, doing everything but watch the JV game, which I wanted them to watch. So um, we got them out of there and said, hey, look, uh, you'll see the excitement. Uh, if you want to go in there early, that's fine, but we'll meet at the, at the Y. The locker rooms are too small to get dressed anyway. So uh, let's uh, put on our gear there. We'll put our jackets on and, and uh, jog it over to the, um, to the armory and, uh, and be there for the start of the game. And they always got nervous. Uh, what happens if they start? I said, they can't start without us. So uh, uh, we'll go like that. Our locker room was a little smaller than Salt's, and that was part of the issue as well. Any final thoughts or things when they dim the lights for the last time, Coach? Well, I, th I, th I think it's going to be a lot of, a lot of good memories. I, uh, I think in this situation now, you've got to move on. 
and maybe it's a thing of the past, but there's going to be a lot of good memories for some of the people that played down there, especially, because it was, it was quite an honor, I think. Coach? Well, I, th I, think, uh, I think the same. I think uh, the memories will, will linger well beyond uh, uh, the advent of these new field houses, that's for sure. Well, thanks so much, gentlemen, for coming in. It's a, a real pleasure. Um, when we return, we'll have a video tribute to the Armory and some final comments. And under 10 now. Donovan on a spin move, jump shot, no good. Tetzlaff with the rebound, he's got it, kicks it up. Trevor Gruby, got it! Long shot by Donovan is off the, after the buzzer, and North wins it. Welcome back, everybody. Chris, let's talk a little bit about why the change in the Armory. Now, we know that February 11th is supposed to be the last North-South game held there. Uh, what transpired to cause this change? Well, for a number of years, there's been discussion of the Armory basically shutting down, and the city was, you know, talking about different scenarios, what's going to happen to the basketball games, along with all the events that take place there. And uh, with the new uh, gyms and things taking place in North and South, eventually it's going to move there. But... Uh, as we know, there's talk about, you know, maybe changing what the Armory's going to actually have. Maybe there's something with uh, NASA or something going to take place, or maybe they're completely going to take it down, or, you know, who really knows what's going to take place there. But the, the schools had to make a decision and a choice, and I don't know if people realize this, but the uh, city or the school district has to rent the Armory for that day, and it's about, I would say, I heard it's like $1,500 or something for each time that that takes place. And so... So with that, we have to have a new beginning, as they say. What do you think is uh, going to be the uh, mood of the public, you know, once the Armory games are, are not played there, they're played at the field houses of the individual schools? Well, I echo Coach Tom Desatel. I don't think it's ever going to be the same. I, I just think the, the confinement of the students real close to the floor and the parents and things like that is just never going to be the same. And uh, I, I know we've talked about this for a number of years now as we knew this was coming to an end, that, you know, I really enjoy the Armory and all the experiences and I know it sounds corny, but I, I, I really believe there's been a lot of young men and women who have played there, and uh, I think it's going to be a tough night, and I think it's going to be a tough night for us and a lot of people who's been in Sheboygan for so many years, and, you know, we're talking parents and grandchildren, you know, we, you know we've talked to the coaches, they said, yeah, maybe there was a father that went to north and a mother that went to south, and then they had children and, you know, different things, and now with us having live TV there, you know, it just brought a new aspect of the north-south game. It goes homes and, you know, in taverns and bars and restaurants all over Sheboygan. It's been really a neat experience. I know for me, uh, it started back when I was a kid, and, you know, I was kind of a gym rat, and I can remember being at north-south basketball games when I was a youngster, uh, transpired over to being a player for Sheboygan North and playing in a number of games as a JV player and as a varsity player. Uh, then helping Coach Pete Peterson in the early 90s uh, coach his basketball team and having a couple games down at the Armory. And then it culminates now in, in, as being a broadcaster and uh, doing games in, on that level of, of participation in the Armory. So I've gone through a lot of different levels of participation in the Armory, and personally I know I'm going to miss it. It's, uh, you know, it's been a part of my life that uh, I enjoy looking back on, and it'll be missed. Uh, any closing comments, Chris? No, I wore black for a reason. Or we're going to be shutting it down in a couple, you know, in a couple hours or a couple, couple days, and uh, it'll be truly missed. We want to thank you all for watching. Uh, it was a great joy doing this, Joe, and uh, we want to thank the crew for the great job they did. Uh, stay tuned. We have some basketball coming up after this, and uh, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you down the road. Interesting matchup. I think Harry might have the advantage. He's got height and good jumping ability. He controls the tap. <laughs>